Hi guys, Ali here from AC Training, your personal technical trainer. Today we're going to talk about downloading and installing Windows ADK. Yes, Windows Deployment and Assessment Toolkit. What is Windows Deployment and Assessment Toolkit? Windows ADK essentially is a toolkit that provides you a lot of powerful and very functional tools that enhance your experience in deploying your operating system, managing your operating systems in an enterprise or even mid-sized organization. Um, there are two ways for downloading and installing Windows ADK. We're gonna show them, we're gonna show you both and look into the benefits of each method. Let's start with the online version of the installation. You can either install the ADK online or you can download it, save it on your hard drive and install it on other computers. Let's start with the online version. I'm going to go ahead, open a browser, go to the Google website and search for Windows ADK, Windows ADK for Windows 11. That's what we're running. Which version of Windows am I running? If I type in WinVer, it shows which version I'm using. We're using version 21H2. Yes, we know 22H2 is out. There would be a video coming out soon about the new features of Windows 22H2. Exciting. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell button to be notified on the new content that is coming out. You can also leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what other subjects are you interested. Once I receive enough comments, I will create a video on that particular subject. Let's go ahead and continue with our download and installing Windows ADK for Windows 11. The very first link, as it says, download and install Windows ADK for Windows 11. Let's go ahead and open up this link. If you notice, at the very first part, it is talking about Windows ADK for Windows 22H2. We just checked our operating system is 21H2. So we need the ADK for 21H2. If I scroll down in the page, I see that there are older versions of the same toolkit. Now what I need, I need the Windows ADK for Windows 11 21H2. And that's what we're going to use. Let's go ahead and open this one. What you see, it will just give you an ADK setup file. This is the online version of the setup. If you run this one, it will automatically download the proper tools that you need and install it on your computer. I'm going to show you the wizard and then go back to the offline mode. Let's run the installation. Very first section, you have the option to decide. What would you like to do? Are you going to install the ADK on your local computer right now, which is going to probably probably need about 1.6 gigabyte of your hard drive. And it's going to download it from internet directly, depending on your internet speed, internet connection speed. It might take a little bit shorter or longer. You have the other option to download it and save it offline for installation on a separate computer. I have already completed that task. So if I select this one, you give it a link. Where would you like to uh, download to be completed? It will take about 1.7 gigabytes and you can use it on any computer. I have already completed this task to save some time. Let's take a look at the offline version of the installation. As I said earlier, we have already downloaded the uh, ADK and saved it on my computer. Again, you'll see the same structure. You see the ADK setup and the installer files that comes with it. You only need to run the, the Windows ADK setup executable file. I'm going to install it on this computer. Click next. Would you like to share some insights and collections and data collections back to Microsoft? It's a lab. I'm not planning to share anything with Microsoft, so I'm clicking no. Next, the license agreement. Believe it or not, I've read it once. It's technically telling us that we agree with whatever Microsoft says and we have to follow. Click accept, and that's when the fun begins. What tools are available for us in this toolkit? 
Let me minimize the pages so we can focus on the tools here. As you see in this toolkit, there is a series of tools and applications available to us, starting from application compatibility tools. These are the application, these are the tools that help you mitigate any compatibility issues that your applications might have. You will run these tools against the applications that are not working on the newer version of operating system, and it will give you suggestions on how to fix those tools. We have the deployment tools. It will allow you to customize and manage your Windows image files. If you have any WIM file which you would like to configure, customize or add things to those images, you will need deployment tools. It will also install a DISM or Deployment Image Servicing and Management tool. It's a command line utility which allows you to create an image, deploy an image, and do a lot more with it. It requires PowerShell version 3, which is by default installed on most of the Windows 10 clients and later. So that wouldn't be an issue. Next tool is Imaging and Configuration Designer, ICD. ICD is a very powerful tool, a tool that allows you to customize your images, customize your deployment, and even do a little bit more with the provisioning tasks that you would like to do for all your Windows devices across your network. Um, you'll find yourself using this tool a lot when you start to manage an enterprise with thousands of computers. It requires some other tools, for example, USMT, which is another tool in the same toolkit. So if you want to have this one, you got to make sure that you're installing the user state migration tools. I'm going to talk about USMT soon. Next tool is the configuration designer. Configuration designer is a great tool to have for small businesses, small enterprises, and specifically for schools. It is great for you if you would like to uh, streamline your deployments. When you have a settings that you would like to apply to a bunch of computers, you have so many images and you want to apply same configuration to all of them, Configuration Designer is a tool that help you to do that. Next tool, User State Migration Tools. Just keep in mind, any of these tools, if you're interested to learn more about them, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I will create a video describing each one of these tools separately. USMT or User State Migration Tool is a handy tool that allows you as an administrator to take a backup of the contents that the user has and migrate it to another computer. Imagine you are changing a computer for one of your clients. One of your users is getting a new computer, is getting an upgrade. They had maybe used the computer for three, four years. They have a bunch of files saved everywhere. A lot of settings have been applied to that user, and now you're going to transfer everything to the new computer. USMT allows you to take a backup, save it in a network location or an external hard drive, and then restore it on the destination computer. Next tool is Volume Activation Management Tool, or VAMT. It's very self-descriptive. It's a tool for managing the activation of operating system, Windows Server, or even Office. So you don't have to deal with the activation of these products individually. It is another tool that requires a PowerShell version 3 or higher to be installed, which is by default installed on most Windows clients. Also, it will require a database server, sometimes similar to SQL Server. You can even use the free edition, which is the express edition. It has its own limitations, but depending on the size of your company, you might be good for using Windows SQL Server Express Edition. Next tool, Windows Performance Toolkit. Um, this tool, along with two more tools that are similar, are for tracking the performance of your computers in case of if an event happened, if in a specific application you're running, how does your computer perform? You, you need to analyze those performances, specifically if you're dealing with a server environment and you need to see 
if that application is performing the way you're expecting it to perform. Next one, Windows Assessment Toolkit, another useful tool. It is mostly used for checking a single specific computer. An assessment technically simulates what would happen if a specific action is taken by a user. Let's say a user runs an application and you would like to see how does this operating system behave. So you will use the Windows Assessment Toolkit to analyze those behaviors. Next, you have the Microsoft User Experience Virtualization or UEV template generator. Um, what is UEV or User Experience Virtualization? If you're familiar with Microsoft roaming profiles, that's the next level. UEV is the next level of roaming profiles. Roaming profiles technically allow you to allow your users to have their profiles, your, their desktop settings, configuration settings, their windows, all the application settings that they've made to be transferred with them regardless of the computer they use. If they're using the computer number one today, they see the desktop background, the files they have saved under my documents and everything else. And then tomorrow they're logging into another office in another city on another computer they should be able to see their files. They should be able to see their settings not, and not need to go ahead and start configuring everything from scratch. That is user profiles roaming. Now, it comes with its own limitations. It comes with its own um, difficulties. But user experience virtualization takes that one step further. It gives you a lot more features and functionalities. Next tool is the application virtualization or app v sequencer. App v sequencer is a tool that allows you to create virtualized application. What is an app v? Technically, it is similar to a portable application, which allows you to run several versions of the same application on a client without installing them, without having to deal with the conflicts. If you'd like to learn more about the app v sequencer and how to create an app v sequencer or app v package, please look at the link. Uh, I think it should be on the right or left side of the screen. And I will put a link in the video below. I've already created a video for that. Please feel free to watch that if you'd like to learn more. And uh, app v auto sequencer is when you want to do a batch. When you have a lot of applications that you need to see, uh, to virtualize and you like to do it in batch. And lastly, Media Experience Analyzer is a recommended performance analysis tool for diagnosing audio and video performance issues. So if your computer audio or video system is not working the way you expect it to work or do you see glitches, you would be using Media Experience Analyzer. Now we have an overall understanding of each one of these tools. Let's click Install. We are prompted with an elevated request. Yes, elevate my permissions. I already have admin rights. And the installer sh should start installing the process. Depending on your processing power, it might take a few minutes. For some, it might be a little bit longer. I'm going to put the video on pause and unpause it when the installation is finished. There you go. You have your Windows Assessment and Deployment Toolkit installed. If you select this check mark, it will show you a guide with a help document that shows you a very brief introduction about some of the tools. I'm going to click close and browse my start menu to see what has been added here. If I go to all applications, scroll down, we see that Windows Kit is new, which means it has been recently installed. All the tools that we talked about exist under the Windows Kit. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Please make sure to give it a, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, like, comment. It will help the channel and it will motivate me to create more videos for you. Please leave in the comments below. What else would you like to see? See you on the next video.